Okay, so, and dependence and Hey everyone, it's Lance from Christianity Day. It's that time of year again, and to say I'm frustrated barely begins to address it. It's tax time. That time of year when Uncle Sam wants his cut of the earnings that you've had all year. Looking at these stupid looking new forms that I just had to try to figure out, it really makes me cross-eyed. It really makes me wonder what a Christian should be thinking about taxation. Of course, before I go into you know, all that, thinking of my finances, if you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button. Consider subscribing to my channel. And if you want to help me with all the time and effort that I put into these videos and money, throw me a $1 donation at patreon.com slash Christianity Minute. Well, taxes during biblical times were simpler. If we look at the Old Testament under patriarchal times, we see in Genesis 14, 18 through 20, which reads, And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. He was priest of the Most High God. And he blessed them, and he said, Blessed be Abram by God, Most High, possessor of heaven and of earth. And blessings be God, Most High, who has delivered your enemies into your hand. And Abram gave him a tenth of everything. While it's difficult to, difficult to classify this as actual taxation, it's reasonable to see that Abraham was giving of him a tenth of everything, not only because he was a priest, but because he was king. Remember that in the days of Abraham, all that existed really were theocracies. Usually when we think of kings, we have a tendency to think about the medieval and revolutionary war era kings who had absolute rule, but weren't considered a direct part of the religion. Melchizedek was likely a king because he was chosen by God to be a priest. So this would have been a governmental entity that Abraham was paying tribute to, even though it was also a religious one. Of course, if we look at the old law, a tenth or tithe was set aside for a religious government of the Jewish people from God himself, from Mount Sinai, in Leviticus chapter 27, verses 30 through 34, which reads, Every tithe of the land, whether of the seed of the land or the fruit of the trees, is the Lord's. It is holy to the Lord. If a man wishes to redeem some of the tithe, he shall add a fifth to it. And every tithe of herds and flocks, every tenth of animal, all that pass under the herdsman's staff shall be holy to the Lord. One shall not differentiate between good or bad, neither shall he make a substitute for it. And if he does substitute for it, then both it and the substitute will be holy, and it shall not be redeemed. These are the commandments that the Lord commanded Moses for the people of Israel on Mount Sinai. Well, that gives us the New Testament. That's old stuff. The New Testament doesn't really have religious governance today, instituted by God, though what did Jesus have to say about it? Well, we can actually see this is addressed directly in the Bible. Many of the people who were trying to get Jesus in trouble were going to spread these rumors about Jesus, telling people not to pay taxes. We see evidence of this when Jesus is about to be put to death in Luke 23, verses 1 and 2. It says, Then the whole company of them arose and brought him before Pilate. And they began to accuse him, saying, We found this man misleading our nation and forbidding us to give tribute to Caesar, and saying that he himself is Christ, a king. To say the least, this rumor is kind of a big deal, and Jesus is asked to speak up for himself in Matthew chapter 22, verses 15 through 22. It says that the Pharisees went and plotted how to entangle him in his words, and they sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are true and teach the way of God truthfully, and you don't care about anyone's opinion, for you are not swayed by appearances. Tell us then, what do you think? Is it lawful for to pay taxes to Caesar or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why do you put me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. And Jesus said, Whose likeness and inscription is this? And they said, Caesar's. I wish I had a dollar here, but unfortunately, 
I'm a teacher. Anyway, and he said to them, therefore, render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard it, they marveled, and they left him and went away. Now, we even have Jesus providing the money to pay a tax in Matthew 17, 24 through 27. It says, when they came to Copernicum, the collectors of the two drop one tax went up to Peter and said, does your teacher not pay the tax? He said, yes. And he went and he came into the house. Jesus spoke to him first saying, what do you think, Simon? From whom do kings of the earth take toll or tax? From their sons or from others? And when he said from others, Jesus said to him, then the sons are free. However, do not give offense to them. Go to the sea and cast a hook and take the first fish that comes up. And when you open its mouth, you will find a shekel. Take that, give it to them for me and for yourself. Well, point blank, Jesus paid his taxes. And, give us instru- and gave us instruction and example for us to follow for a new law carried unto today. A Christian pays their taxes. Anyone who avoids taxation, hides income, claims extra dependence, etc., uh, any other number of illegal activities, it may be considered a little white lie. They're violating God's law. They can face a damnation for it. Normally, I don't like to get political with you, but I'm with you. I'm a teacher. I don't like giving 37 of the 82 cents that I earn annually to Washington. And if you want to lead protest and lobby to change that, go for it. Try to get the teachers to get paid a living wage while you're at it, huh? That's the beauty of modest go- uh, of modern governments, especially in the United States. It's legal and encouraged to do such activities. There are even ways to legally reduce the taxation we owe. But a Christian doesn't take it into his own hands to change what is owed to the government without the law being written. Taxation's not theft, even though it feels like it sometimes. You know what? Speaking of loopholes that I can take advantage of, why am I doing this? My wife's an accountant, after all. I referee sixth graders during the week and tell people stories out of a 2,000-year-old book on the weekend. She can do this in her sleep. You know what? I'll let her do it. That's been your Christianity Minute for this week. I work hard to make sure that all things said are scripturally accurate, offer exegesis, and clearly state opinions. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section down below. Also, check out some of my other videos eh, over here somewhere on the left. Remember, if you like this video, like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. Also, if you want to support this video directly and me, you can do so on Patreon. I post a new video every Sunday and a short devotional video every Tuesday and Thursday. I hope you learned something today, and I really look forward to seeing you again next time right here on Christianity Minute. I hope. She's going to be really mad. I just scattered those everywhere. They're all out of order now. I'm going into hiding. Bye.